here we go. Welcome to Campaigns That Drive Action. We're talking about newsletters and announcement today featuring email and social engagement. This presentation is being recorded, so everyone will receive a follow-up email with a copy of the recorded presentation. So my name is Dana Crawford, and I'm known as Power Selling Mom. You can visit my website later. And I am a certified business consultant trained by eBay, which is I've been an eBay seller for 18 years. And then um, in 2007, I was contacted by Constant Contact to become a local expert with them because I was so successful with my own personal email marketing that I joined the team. I was honored. So you can find all of my information online. So today we're going to talk about um, growing with Constant Contact, just to give you an idea of what what it is exactly, some of you may not know. Um, you can get results fast with affordable, easy to use engagement marketing tools and free coaching. Now, the coaching is something that they just started, so it's really awesome that it's free now. And they have um, opportunities for newsletters and announcements, offers and promotions, feedbacks and surveys, and event registrations, which I use pretty much all of them. So today's agenda, we're going to talk about what what are campaigns and newsletters. That's why we're all here. We're going to go into detail. And we're going to talk about email, because email marketing plays a big part of our marketing. And then email plus social, you do have to use both. And I recommend using both to grow your marketing, to grow your business and, of course, with your marketing plan. We're going to talk about the next steps for getting started. So we'll start today with campaigns and newsletters. This will be the first part of the presentation. So I want to give you a simple definition or a framework for what marketing really is. So you already know generally what it is, but when I say the word marketing, I mean something very specific. And it's important that we're on the same page. My definition of marketing has three simple parts. You define an audience, a group of people that you want to target. You reach out to them with a message that is specific to that audience, and you seek a physical and measurable response. A click, a response would be a click, a reply, a call, a purchase, a referral, a buy it now. These are all actions that represent a decision made by a human to react to your message. So keep this in mind as we discuss marketing and marketing campaigns and the ways to deliver the most effective campaign. So you're doing these things because you want people, your customers, your clients, your donors, your supporters, to do something. Now first let's talk about campaigns. What does this word really mean? Very simply, there are two parts to a campaign. First, you push out some type of content. And we'll talk more about what content is in a bit. But you're going to push content out to your followers, your supporters. And then second, we'll pull some sort of response from them. So you want them to read, to forward, or share what you sent them, show up for an event, call. Um, attend, or you want them to take some type of action. So think about a campaign in terms of push-pull. And more importantly, do not think about it as just putting an offer out there and making the sale. In this new marketing world, it's more like a conversation, which lends itself to that advantage we talked about when you have over big business. So as a company, you can engage in conversation that feels and, in fact, 
is much less like a sales gimmick and more like a nurturing relationship. So if you're doing it right, it'll seem like that from both sides of the conversation. So simply put, a newsletter is a communication you send, usually through email, to your customers, your supporters, your clients, your volunteers, sharing information and relevant insights that they want to read about. Very simple. Now, there are lots of different types of communications, loosely re referred to as newsletters, that you might send. So these are just a few examples. We're going to have, um, you're going to send information to your audience. You may, you may send a complete newsletter. You may send just a few tidbits about an event. You may send a card or announcement. You, the main thing is, these are just a few examples from sending a quick update just to keep your audience informed to a simple card or announcement all the way to what we call a custom code email where you or a designer you work with create your own email in platform using custom code. So if you have a coder or you're into coding, then it's also another option. But most of us don't bother with coding because there's so many um, pre-made templates that we don't have to deal with the code stuff. Okay, so next we're going to talk about emails. So what do you write about in your newsletter? That's the first thing. This is one of the biggest hurdles that most people have. They're afraid to get involved with, with newsletters because they think, well, I don't know what to write about. So luckily the answer can be very simple. First and above all else, you write about what you know, what they don't know. So you share your knowledge. Everybody on this webinar today has, you know something that I don't know. So you would want to share your um, knowledge. So next, you're going to write about what you have access to that they don't have access to. And you have more access than you might think. So this can mean that you let them download a special report, you give them a backstage pass, you offer early registration or reserve seating, um, an extra hour of your time when they pay for two, and give it away as much as you can. So what you're trying to do is build what is called a resource relationship, where when their need for what you do comes up, you are the person that, gives, that comes to mind. So give it away your knowledge and your access when you can. And you don't have to be a pro writer. Original material every time is not necessary. You just need to be the hub of the point of access. So send links to other sources. Know your stuff and they will see you as their resource. So how much is enough? Who wants to read a long email? I know I don't. It's kind of like um, the eBay seller that has the eBay listing that goes on and on and on and on and on. You think you need your attorney. You're afraid to buy the item. The same thing is with email marketing. No one has ever raised their hand when I ask who wants to read a long email. So if you're a church or a chamber or a commerce or a school, you probably have long emails and we're okay with getting those. Our children and our businesses rely on you, and we want to see activity. We are willing to get a long email from you, right? Uh, we don't actually read them, but it's okay that we see them. So take the pressure to create a write off yourself. Less is always, less is more, always. There is no rule that says your newsletter needs to have three articles and three pictures and three links. One thing is plenty. There is a constant contact customer whose new newsletter is called One Thing. And he did it to make it easy on himself and it works really well. So people can absorb it and he's not under the gun to come up with a bunch of content to fill it up. And don't forget, whoops, wrong mouse. 
don't forget that over 50% are reading on mobile devices. So who's going to scroll through, through, who's going to scroll through 50%, who's going to scroll through 14 articles? So your email, your emails and their social media activities are not for telling people everything that you do. So this is part of the hole people dig for themselves when they start writing their emails. They try to say everything. And that is not what your emails and social media posts are for. That's what your website is for. Your emails and your social media is about offering one thing at a time and tracking whether or not it moves the needle, plain and simple. So here are some examples of what others are doing. These are examples um, from some constant contact customers with great looking campaigns with simple, easy to absorb content and obvious actions to take. So you can see um, the first one, this one's from a nonprofit sharing information about themselves that's in the press. And then we have a restaurant sharing their current specials. And it looks like a nonprofit um, sharing an event notice. A B2B, business to business, showcasing their services they have. And so there's, there's just different um, easy to use campaigns. But a picture is worth, picture gets 47% more click through activity than content without images. So that really does make sense, right? But don't over rely on images. So don't totally rely on your images. Be sure to use text labels in case images aren't displayed by the restricted mail program. Those of you using Constant Contact and you notice where you upload your image, and then there's a place for you to add um, a label for the image. It's really important you do not skip that. Because the emails that go out, some, some people may not receive the graphic in their email, so they don't know what in the world you're trying to tell them. So it's a good idea to make sure you identify what the picture is. And don't use images of your content. That's not recommended. So you don't you know, take pictures of pictures. And remember, your content is viewed on mobile devices. So you really want to make sure that it's a good picture. Just like with your eBay listing, you want to make sure you have a very good photo that is going to be um, able to be seen and viewed properly, cropped properly, or whatever else is needed. That it's a crisp, crisp, clear photo. So images are a great great way to convey a message, tell a story, create a connection. But if you don't carefully consider how you're going to use the images, you may end up with some unintended consequences that lead, at best, to someone not reading your email. At worst, they'll unsubscribe from your list, and you won't be able to communicate with them at all. So here are some common challenges to consider. Notice the X, the red X, where is it, oh, oh gosh, I missed it, sorry, 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 back up, back up, here we go. So here, notice the red X up here in the corner, that's there because some mobile email clients may not display images by default. So be sure that you're using what's called alt text. A-L-T-T-E-X-T, -T -E -T, or text that appears if the image doesn't. So at least people know what's supposed to be there. And here is an example that's a great picture, the promotional poster used for a fundraiser, and then viewed on a desktop email client may look great, but the problem is that on a mobile device, it isn't, it's not seen. So the rest of the message can't be seen. The reader has to scroll through to get to the message. 
And then finally, be aware on how or where your images are placed. So notice the one on the right. It's off to the right. Again, I can't stress it enough. Before you send any messages out to your customers or supporters, test the email by sending it to yourself. Or feel free to send it to me. I would love to see your emails. Add my name to your list. I want to be your coach. I want to cheer you on. Add my name to your list. And I would be happy when you send the test email, put the word test, and say, hey, what do you think, Dana? And I'll, I'll give you my opinion. And then view it with your readers in mind and make changes accordingly. A few extra minutes of testing can save you a big headache later, seriously. So images are great because they can help tell your story across multiple channels. Pictures have become more and more relevant in social and email marketing, marketing. So many of us are walking around with a camera in our pockets. I know I am. And this doesn't have to mean high-end production anymore. If you have a highly visual content or a great photo or product of, of, at your event or whatever you're marketing, you will want to check out opportunities to share those images you have through different channels. So here are some channels. You've got Instagram, we've got Pinterest, we can share them on YouTube, um, Facebook. Many consumers are beginning to shop and play on these channels. So it may be worth a look to test whether or not what you are marketing would be worth well on those channels. So keep in mind, we haven't left email out here. So email is becoming more and more of a visual medium as well, including video. So one key here is to know your audience. If you own a business that you can show off product visually, you can do more with a headline and a photo than the most carefully crafted copy. And if you're a consultant or a service provider, Share your know-how. Write a blog post about what you know how to do. Pick an image that reinforces it and pin it, post it, tweet it. Constant Contact actually did a test with Facebook promotions of webinars and found that when they used an image rather than just a text, they saw a 127% lift in engagement with those posts. So it's worth a try. But we'll talk a bit about social media later, but I wanted to say this for now. If you're going to be using a picture in your newsletter, and then again on your social channel, be sure to link the picture on the social channel back to whatever you want them to keep engaging with you, like back to your website, where you might include a sign up for your newsletter, or you know, something. But it's, it's important to take advantage of that opportunity to always include a link. So we'll talk briefly about social media a bit later, but I wanted you to keep in mind at this point as we've um, been talking about content and what to write or images to think about, is that you should be thinking about those things with more than one delivery medium in mind. That means that you can reuse and repurpose everything. One article can be used many times on various channels. So you might send a newsletter with five tips for cleaning out your closet, and each tip could be tweeted once a day for a week. You could show before and after pictures in a press release about the benefits of your service, and then you could post those pictures on Pinterest. If you've sent an announcement about something of interest to your readers via email, you can get some mileage with that announcement across your social channels as well. So remember that, repurpose and reuse. Now that you have a general idea of what you're going to try, I want to give you some insight into what works, how to get more people to stop and consider your offer, and how to get more physical, measurable response. This is my favorite part of this class, of this, well, we're doing a webinar. Usually this is a class I do locally here in Ocala, Florida. So look at these three words. These three words rule your world as a marketer and as a consumer or business person. Every email or social media post that you get 
and every one that you sent or post falls into one of these categories, now, later, or never. So think about this morning when you checked your email. Whether you were aware of it or not, you were sorting your messages into these three categories automatically, now, later, or never. And I apologize now for not bringing this to your attention and making it a conscious experience for you. For the next two or three days when you go through your email, you will find yourself saying it out loud, now, later, or never, 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 never. And you want to curse me for making something that was so seamlessly obvious for you. But I promise it will go away. That I still, still use it, though. But it's important that you know, you need to know this both as a recipient and as a sender or a poster. How do you make sure that you are now? You don't want to be a never, obviously. And a later, let's face it, it's, well, in, unintentional, right? You flag it or you tell yourself, oh, I'll come back to that later. But nine times out of ten, do you? So they usually laugh and say no when I'm at my event. So there are three fundamental factors into whether someone notices and reacts to your campaign. So first they say, who is it from? That is going to be important. That's why it's important to make sure. Like when you get an email from me, it'll say my name, Dana Crawford, Power Selling Mom. It'll, you'll know, there's no doubt that it's me. And then the next thing that's going to help you determine whether you're going to open it now, later, or never is the subject line. Is it an intriguing subject line? Is it sound like, buy my product, buy my product? Well, probably not going to open it right away or maybe never. And remember that your timing is um, meaning when you sent it and how often that it's read. This you know, what time of day? If I'm in the middle of a meeting and I've got emails coming in, that's going to probably be later or never if it has a bad subject line. So this is some things to really keep in, in mind as you're working on your own emails to send out. Are your customers going to read them now or later or never? You keep that in mind as you're reading your emails. So now, how do you win the battle of priorities and get more people to stop and open your email or to stop and read your Facebook post or your tweet or to share your pin on Pinterest? It turns out who the message or offer is from is extremely important. So think about how you personally sort your mail. Or if you're on Facebook, think about the news feed. Typically, when you open up your email, think about how you did that this morning. You start at the top of the list and you go down sorting by who it's from. So who the email or the social media post came from turns out to be the most important part of winning the battle of priorities. Who do it based on who is important for you to be recognizable. Whoops, oh, I'm hitting the wrong mouse. I got too many mouses, here we go. So you want to be the most recognizable and to be recognized across all the channels you're using. If you send your emails using your name, but your Facebook page shows up in people's news feeds as your business name, maybe people might not make the connection. So we do know that with email and very often with social media sites, more people will react to a person's name than to a business name. Now, just to be sure that you're consistent with the name you use and ensure that it's the one that you'll be recognized by, so, the ultimately, so ultimately your readers and followers will stop and open your email, read your post, because they know you're going to get something of value and relevance from you. So this is another place where your advantage as a small company kicks in, as a small company. Um, you can be the face or the name of the company. Now there are some important considerations that shouldn't be overlooked and they relate to something called the Can Spam Act, which is the law that sets the rules for commercial email, establishes requirements for commercial messages, gives recipients the right to have you stop emailing them, and spells out tough penalties for violations. The law makes no exception for business-to-business -business email. 
that means all email, for example, a message to former customers, can, um, oh, excuse me, former customers announcing a new product line must comply with the law. So one provision of the CAN spam is that the from, to, and reply to names must be accurate and identify the person or business who initiates the message. So therefore, if I sign up for an email from Joe Pizza, the from address should be Joe Pizza and not Joe Smith. That said, using a combination of your name and your company name will solve this issue in many cases. Use your name in the from name on your emails and include a comma with your company name there as well. Keep that in mind. Now templates make the process of sending emails much easier while still allowing you to preserve the look and feel of your brand. These are some examples of templates from Constant Contact because obviously that's what I have access to. But whatever system you're using, make sure they have mobile friendly templates that are easy to edit to match colors. Be sure to make them your own with your own logos and your own photo links. It doesn't have to be hard to look professional and sharp. So now you've noticed that the images of the first two and let's see, we talked about images earlier. I'll just remind you to make sure that the images will work in both a desktop and a mobile email. In the first template, it looks great, but the creator should be testing on a mobile device to see how much the image pushes the text below the fold. It may look great on a desktop, but not work on a mobile device. The second one is a little bit better because there's a message located next to the image, and the message is the call to action. So, when you're up against the now later game, let's see where was I? On the headline of your social media post, you can make a big difference in the response. Here's a simple method, okay, for writing more powerful subject and headlines. It's called the two, two, two principle. So let's walk through it quickly. Two, the first two is for two seconds. You typically have to compel them to pay attention. The second two is the first two words of your subject line or headline. That's really all they read before making a decision, and not a decision about whether to read your message, but as to whether or not they will even bother to read the rest of the subject line. And the third two, why does this the third two is for why does this email or message matter today? Today, that's the third two. So if you can answer that question in your subject line or headline or close to the first two words as possible, more people will stop and at least open your message. So how do you do it? How do you write one of these? On my email list, I like to write whenever, in my experience, if I put on my subject line, quick note from Dana, or a few tips from Dana, to give people the impression that it's going to be a short, sweet email. I, my open rate is huge when I put the word quick in there. So it's important to point out that you don't need to, to go the urgency all the time, meaning you don't always have to put a stamp on it, say things like today only, or by close of business, or like that. It's more about making it very clear to people that your message is relevant and timely in order to win that now, later, or never battle. I'll tell you, when I get messages that say, um, shop now, sale, hurry, you know, with words like that, it's like, oh, brother, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Buy my product, buy my product. I'm probably going to not open that right away. So your subject line, keep this in mind, two, two, two. So winning the battle of priorities. Here are some examples of subject lines to give you an idea. March newsletter or uh, June newsletter. That's not good, but a good news, a good 
subject line is tomorrow, need three hammers, can you help? This is a subject line from a Habitat. Joe's Pet Store newsletter. Well, I'm not sure I want to open it now because it's all, it's going to, I'm, I don't know. When I see the word newsletter, I think that it's probably going to be long. So I, I'm putting that in my later file. But if it says alert, help your dog beat the heat, well, I don't have a dog, but <laughs> I have a cat, but I have an animal, and I care very much about animals, so I might want to see what that alert is about helping dogs. And then children's classes, or still time, openings available for ch children's classes. Um, those of you that are education specialists with eBay, you can say, still time, space available, come join us. So these are kind of things that are attention getters that those first two words make me think, oh, sense of urgency without um, ruining, you know, the anticipation. So keep that in mind when you're creating your titles, your subject line. So the last piece in winning the battle of priorities is timing. So when to send is another very common question, both for how often to send and also when in terms of the time of day or the day of the week. So for newsletters or email marketing frequency, monthly is the most common, but it's also a good idea to add unexpected messages every once in a while, especially if they relate to an existing announcement about your organization. So ask yourself, as you start trying to determine when it's the best time to send your newsletter or announcement, the question you want to answer is, when will my readers be most likely to take the action that I want? When will they be most likely to click through to the article I posted, come to my store after reading it, or register for an event, etc.? So use that as a starting point. But now, I want to describe some simple steps you can take to really zero in on the best day and time to send your newsletter. So finding your best day. First, take your list of contacts and divide it into three equal lists. So take the whole list and break it into thirds. Now, this is something you'll want to keep in mind later. I know some of you are brand new and your lists aren't real big. And, and But those of you that have a big list and have been with Constant Contact or have been email marketing for a while, I want you to give this a try because I have tried it and I, it really helped me out a lot. So you divide your list into three groups of people. And then next, choose three days of the week that you want to test. So say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, just pick three days. So if you're a B2B, you'll likely want to send during regular business hours, but you know your audience in case that doesn't hold true. So for all others, it's up, everything goes for testing. So now you have your three lists and you want to test on different days of the week. So send your email the same, send the same email to each of your lists. The first group on Monday, the second group gets it Wednesday, the third group gets it on Friday. And then measure your results. You can do this as long as you are using email marketing service. They all tell you who opened, who clicked, when they clicked, how many times, and so on. So when you look at the stats, you'll know which day was the best of the three days that you tested. Use the same three groups of people, and now you will choose three different times of the day you want to test. So a morning, midday, afternoon, evening, the next time you're ready to send out your email. Send it on your best performing days from the last test, and send the first group their email in the morning. The second group gets it midday, the third group gets it in the afternoon or evening, and then look at your stats. And this will help you know which time of the day has the best results. 
So now you'll know the best day, the best time of the day to send emails for the best response. So please make sure that you're not romanced by a high open rate, as they say. Just measuring the open rate will not give you a clear picture of success. You might have a lot of people open it, but very few take the action you want them to take. Measure the physical measurable response. So when to post, when to send or post. So now you have the best day on which to send and the best time at which to send. Excellent. So again, for those who are brand new to sending out newsletters, don't worry for now. You could start with simply testing different days and noting the response rate, then trying different times on that day. So don't worry about splitting your list, comparing results, etc. For everyone, let me add a caution. Do not be romanced by a high open rate. Measure action. You can get a huge open rate, but without actions, it's not going to help your business. You want to see how many people clicked. That's what we want. So, some practical advice. Here we have 67%. This is from uh, uh, June 2010. I actually could send you the, the links to the statistics, but this slide is a great one to refer back to after you've left the class. So um, you can review it later, almost like a checklist if you want to copy this screen right now. But I'll go through them quickly. Many people do not see pictures in their emails and text links. Um, more clicks than a beautiful button, probably because of that 67% stat. So make sure your logo is left or centered, not right, because people often see email in small windows that eclipse the right side. And make sure your company name is in the text near the top. If your name is only in a graphic, of your logo, all those people with no pictures will not realize who the message is from and, you know, it might be confusing to them. So the action you want people to take should be above the scroll line. Most people do not scroll and do not give too many choices, one or two at the most. People do not have time to window shop and make decisions in your email. They want to take action, so reduce the number of choices. Also make sure all of your pictures are clickable. This is easy to do with the tools in Constant Contact. Test your message on yourself. Test it on other people. Send me a text or a test. I don't mind. And see if it looks good for everyone. So I know I've said it a few times already. If you want, be sure to test your newsletters yourself. Tools like Constant Contact make it easy to send a test built right in. So email and social, the final part of this presentation. It works because it influences decisions. It works because it's become a primary driver of behavior. It influences purchasing. 74% of shoppers rely on social networks to guide purchase decisions. It influences word of mouth. Your customers tell their friends about you. 55% of people share information about their purchases on social media. It influences people's connections to nonprofits. 68% of people will go online and learn more about the charities and causes that their friends are supporting when their friends post about it on social media. That's why it's so important to shift your thinking. When you, combine, when you combine email with social media, the combination will both increase the reach of your email campaigns that enjoy 97% deliverability, 
It's actually even higher with constant contact, but on average, that is a standard rate. Sharing your email on social media will get it in front of more people with the potential to grow your list. And if you're doing it right, keeping it short, making the action or response obvious and simple, providing access, information, and real value, then you will grow your business. So here we're going to let's look at a few businesses that have taken. So here we have. Uh, one business called Boloco. It's a chain. It's a small chain of fast casual fast casual burrito restaurants, and how they have leveraging both email and social media together. They use a lot of best practices that we covered here, and they have brand consistency across all the platforms. They have great images. They have great subject lines. Here's an example of a nonprofit, Girl Scouts of Northeast Texas, and how they're leveraging both email and social media together. So like Loco, they carried their branding across all the platforms. They use images in their channels, and they have a lot of great original content. I, I love Girl Scouts. Okay, so next and last we have are the next steps. So the tools to expand your reach. Sharing tools, this is an example of Constant Contact's simple share tool. It makes it easy to push your email campaigns, events, surveys, and offers out on multiple channels with a few clicks. Another way to share is the social share bar. And that should be at the top of all of your emails. Make it very easy for your readers to share your message with others. Part of that referral engine we talked about earlier. They also make it easy to follow you on various social networks in a single click. Our emails include a social share bar at the top. We've made it easy to add social icons with links everywhere in the campaign. It's awesome. And I'd like to invite everybody to join my Facebook group. So I have a group on Facebook. You just type in facebook.com slash groups slash constant contact with the number one, because we are number one. And it's a small, cozy group. But we, um, I just launched it not long ago, but I decided we had, um, it, it was an easy place for me to put in replays from previous webinars or um, answer questions. So it's really been a great tool for that purpose. So I'd love to have anybody interested to join us. And yes, we do have a special offer today that um, Constant Contact has actually just launched. And I was so excited that the launch came out right when I was doing my webinar. It came out yesterday. And it ends June 30th. So take advantage of this because 30% off is an awesome deal. But please make sure that you um, use my referral code so that I can get my star and credit. I really appreciate it. And get signed up. And then um, the follow-up email will have the, the direct links for you. So now I'm available for questions. If anybody has any questions, I know we have a lot to cover. And I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now. So thank you for joining me. I'll stop the recording, and then we'll start with questions.